What is up guys, welcome back for another UU Live. Yes, that's right, I said UU, we're doing two days in a row of UU. I don't believe I've ever done this on the channel, but if, of course, if your name is JB Productions, you will prove me wrong and find a day where I uploaded two UU Lives in a row. Uh, otherwise, uh, this should be the first time. Reason we're doing this, I want to take a little bit of a break from OU. It's very stale right now. Uh, Sun and Moon's coming very soon. We're getting a lot of updates. Uh, on the day you're watching this, we should have had an update video from the Pokemon company. Uh, probably regarding most of the stuff that we already found out, like about Rockruff and uh, the Ultra Beasts. But uh, anyway, like I said, OU's getting a little bit stale. So our buddy Jose passed us a team right here. Uh, we got a couple of Pokemon that we've used before on the channel quite often. We have defensive Sylveon, which I'm not sure why he loves to use, but Specs is just like top tier threat in this tier. Uh, then we have the blade over here standard the blade set swords dance We have a life orb hydreigon with roost because Jose knows that I love life orb mons with roost <laughs> I used one against him uh, in the NBA if you guys didn't check out that battle But this is a really cool set with taunt. I really really like that to prevent fortress from getting up hazards It's really nice uh, normally fortress wouldn't stand because of flamethrower, but anyway then we have uh, Blastoise over here, Mega Blastoise with Scald, Dark Pulse, Or Sphere, and Rapid Spin. Very offensive set, max special attack, modest. Enough speed for uh, 220 mons. We're going to have to find out what hits 220. I'm not 100% sure. Like, I know Rotom, uh, Uninvested Rotom does, but anyway. Then we have, um, actually it hits lower than that. I think that's Landorus's speed, Uninvested is 220. Something like that. T uh, then we have Nidoqueen over here with Life Orb as well, Sheer Force, Earth Power, Sludge Wave, Thunderbolt, which is really cool. When I saw this team and I saw this Nidoqueen set, I knew I had to run it because Thunderbolt is so good right now on Nidoqueen uh, between Suicune, uh, other bulky waters in the tier. They don't expect you to be carrying Thunderbolt and you just hit them for so much damage. Like even Aerodactyl, you can knock it out with Thunderbolt. Really, really powerful move. Uh, also has the chance to pair up, but not with Sheer Force, so forget I said anything. This is our Stealth Rocker, of course. And finally, we have Snorlax, a uh, standard. Uh, thick fat leftovers uh, curse lack set basically uh, with a return over body slam which, with which I personally prefer So this is a really good call 144 HP cool uh, cool investment over here I like this uh, a lot more defense than the normal uh, curse lack set actually uh, a lot more sped as well So this should be cool. Let's test it out. Uh, hopefully we can get a couple of battles really quick The UU ladder is kind of uh, empty at the moment. I would say let's take a look uh, not users here We go UU you can see there's only 61 battles. I mean, it's it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. We are on our main account as well, so maybe that's why it's taking us a little bit of time to get a battle. Either way, I'll pause it until we get one, guys. We will be right back. All right, guys, we got one. And uh, my opponent's rocking an extremely threatening team with Darmanitan and Conkeldur on the same team. Like, how can you have such a powerful wall-breaking core? That's, that's just not right, man. Uh, as well as a very defensive Pokemon in Mandibuzz. Nidoqueen's Thunderbolt hits it for super effective damage, so that's really nice. A uh, very good call, I like that. Uh, what we'll do is we'll lead off with Sylveon, because I'm expecting the Darmanitan lead. And actually, he leads Mamoswine, that's okay too. We're very physically defensive, so we should be able to take any one hit. I'm just gonna go for a Hyper Voice right here as he goes for Stealth Rocks. Uh, this will not knock him down to Sash, but it will be a 2 hit KO. And he doesn't have a very good switch to a Hyper Voice, so he may just actually attack us here. Uh, which is why I kind of want to switch out into either Blastoise. Uh, I think Blastoise might be my play. I'll do that, yep. Yeah. Blastoise should be solid here. Uh, should be able to take this Earthquake relatively well. He actually decides to go for Icicle Crash. Gets a crit right there. It shouldn't matter too much. I'm actually just going to go for the Rapid Spin, I think, to get rid of these hazards. Do I have anything that's faster than this? Other than Hydreigon, which doesn't appreciate an Ice Shard, not really. So I may just want to knock this out. I'm just going to go for a Scald, uh, as he does go for the Quake. It does 47%, and uh, our Blastoise is basically dead now. Uh, rocks will remain up for the remainder of the game, but Rocks do not hinder us too heavily, because we do have the Blade that resists them, as well as the Nidoqueen, and our other three Pokemon have uh, Recovery on them, so it's pretty good. Uh, just going to go for a spin here. He does go for the U-turn to knock us out. That's absolutely fine. We do see the Life Orb, so that's nice. Good to know he's not Scarfed, which means Hydreigon always outspeeds him. And uh, Hydreigon puts in a lot of work this game. This team is a little bit weak to Conkeldur, uh, which I don't like. He goes into Cloyster, though. Okay. Uh, that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to go into... I think I'm going to go to Hydreigon. And I'm going to taunt this thing to prevent it from shell smashing up. Because that's more than likely what it's going to do right here. 
uh, as he does try to go for the shell smash that's awesome he is probably going to attack us on this turn so what i'll do is actually just go for a do i can i lose this though that's the thing because darmanitan is an issue if i let this go down i don't think i can i think i have to go hard into the blade here and uh what we'll do is i think we're going to double out afterwards into Nido queen because Nido Queen uh, can take on the Mandibuzz relatively well. Also throws off a Thunderbolt, be able to hit the Blastoise, the Cloyster, and the Mandibuzz all at the same time. And if I'm able to get up rocks right here, that's really, really solid. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go for my Stealth Rocks. Blastoise isn't too much of a big threat to me. I do have the Sylveon still alive and well. Uh, Sylveon puts in a lot of work on my opponent's team. He actually chooses to go into Conkeldur, so not a terrible play. Uh, if he has the Ice Punch, I'm not sure if it knocks us out necessarily. But I'm just going to calc what move I have that is strongest. And I think it might be Sludge Wave. Actually, it might resist that. I'm, I, I always forget Poison versus Fighting. Uh, fighting is not super effective on Poison, but Poison is neutral on Fighting, I believe. Let's go Sheer Force Attacker versus Needle Queen. Uh, Needle Queen, Offensive Entry Hazard Setter. Uh, so we see that we have 273 Special Attack on this. That is correct. And Sludge Wave is the most powerful move we have to hit him with. So let's just go for it. Should do a lot of damage. We are faster than this thing. He's actually AV. Goes for the Ice Punch. It is not able to knock us out, however. I could throw off another Sludge Wave here. Uh, and it should do, hopefully, about the same. And that that wasn't a roll. Uh, yeah, we can just throw out another Sludge Wave here. His Mach Punch doesn't take us out. Needle Queen isn't too, too important. He does go into Mandibus to take this huge Sludge Wave right here. It's going to do 54%. He should be slower than us, which means if he is Defog, he will not get it off. We're just going to go for another Sludge here, and that should be the end of the Mandibuzz. So that's gone, and I can actually keep this for the Conkeldur should he choose to go into Blastoise here, which is more than likely. I just want to calc something really quickly because I don't know this calc. Blastoise, let's say it's Mega... Thunderbolt over Ice Beam. Thunderbolt does 64 to 76. It is our strongest move to hit him with. However, he chooses to go into Darmanitan. Uh, and I am kind of expecting a Flare Blitz right here. So what I'll actually do is go into Snorlax to take the Flare Blitz. Snorlax is kind of expendable this game. He does only 40% to us, which is really nice. I'm kind of expecting a superpower here, so what I'll do is I'll double into Sylveon on this turn. Uh, if he does go for superpower, it doesn't have a secondary effect, which means he will take uh, extra damage uh, from the life orb, which is really, really nice. As he does go for the U-turn, okay, revealing that he probably doesn't have superpower. He does come in at 12% as well, that's something to keep in mind, as now he finally goes out into his Blastoise. Like I said before, this isn't a huge threat to Sylveon, so I'm just going to throw off a Wish right here. And uh, we'll work with it afterwards. We'll see how much damage this Blastoise can actually do to us. I don't expect it to be too much. It does go for the Rapid Spin, getting rid of the rocks. Very nice for his Darmanitan. However, now something has to take a Hyper Voice right here. He does not have any sort of Wish Passing on his team, which means his Darmanitan will get weakened. Cloyster actually chooses to come in to take a huge hit. Uh, that knocks it down straight to its Sash, which is very nice. Uh, I'm just going to go for another... Actually, I have no reason to let this take damage when I have a Deblade. So I'm just going to go into the blade. Now that his Mandibuzz is gone, I mean, Shadow Sneak is a pretty powerful move. Uh, he's just going to go for the Spear anyway. And I could even... I just want to see the roll on Conkeldur. Conkeldur, Assault Vest versus uh, the blade, Max Attack, Swords Dance. My lights are off right now, so this is a very hard to see. Shadow Sneak does only 19 to 23. So the best play is just to Shadow Sneak right here. I don't know if he would actually keep this. He does not. That's awesome. We're able to get rid of the Cloister, so no more having to deal with a Shell Smashing Menace. Uh, obviously, we still had priority, so that's not too bad. It does go into Darmanitan. Uh, I don't know if I actually want to keep this, so I'm just going to go for Shadow Sneak. This might actually even be able to take him out because he's extremely frail. So we'll see right here. Uh, I will be able to take him out after the Life Orb or the uh, Flare Blitz recoil. So this is really nice. Able to get rid of the Darm. And now what I can do is go into... Hydreigon. I said it right this time, guys. It's Hydreigon. <laughs> and uh, basically get a kill with Draco Meteor or put his Blastoise in range of a um, of a Thunderbolt from Needle Queen. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to go for a Draco Meteor here. He doesn't seem to have Mach Punch, or if he did, he didn't go for it right there. Uh, I doubt his Mega Blastoise is any kind of setup. That would be really weird. 
we're just going to go for the uh, Draco Meteor once again. Uh, be able to knock this thing down into Thunderbolt range. There we go, and that should finish it off. I think we have enough speed to outspeed him as well. Uh, he does go for the Aura Sphere right there. We are 221. How much speed does uh, Blastoise normally run in this tier? Blastoise. Uh, Mega Blastoise. Oh, there it is. Offensive Spinner. 210. Okay, so we do have enough speed to outspeed it. Uh, so we're just going to go into Nidoqueen and fire off a Thunderbolt. Reveal it. Uh, actually, just in case we run into this guy again, I'm just going to go for Sludge Wave and knock this thing out that way. There we go. Able to take it out. Crit didn't matter. Uh, we did calc that before. It was doing more than enough, so that's going to wrap it up for the first game. We can jump into the next game, and uh, I'll pause it again until we get one guy. All right, this one was a lot faster to find. Uh, I didn't even have a time to, to take a sip of water. Uh, this guy's got a very... A uh, common team, I would say. Uh, very common Pokemon like Mega Beedrill, Blissey, Chandelure, and Conkeldur. Uh, the Cloyster, we have to face off against another Cloyster again, but luckily we have the Blade to check that. Honchkrow is a little bit threatening, I would say. As long as uh, Blastoise or Snorlax are alive, though, we should be good to go. That takes a lot of recoil from the Brave Bird at plus one, so we're able to take it out with a return afterwards. Uh, I don't like that Snorlax cannot touch that Chandelure. That's the only issue I have. I uh, kind of want to get up rocks early at the same time the Beedrill is a likely lead and Drill Run is going to hurt So I think that Blastoise might actually be my best lead uh, This team has like very few physical threats and Blissey is an issue Blissey is definitely an issue. I need to set up the blade as quickly as possible against this guy So we're gonna leave Blastoise Because it leads off pretty well against the Beedrill like it it doesn't force him to go for a protect, uh, which is why I'm going to just throw out a Scald and hope for a burn on something, as he should just U-turn here. He does. That does 50%. <laughs> That's insane. Beedrill is so strong, man. I mean, I could have gone into the Blade there and quad resisted it. Uh, it would have done absolutely nothing to us, but uh, I didn't want to give his Chandelure a chance to come in for free, so he is going to go Blissey. That's absolutely fine. I'm assuming the Rocks are going up here. I'm actually just going to... Uh, trade rocks right now going to needle queen. Hopefully he doesn't double uh, as he does actually into his chandelure Which is fine for us. This is absolutely okay uh, I'm just gonna throw up rocks here as he goes for the fire blast. That is specs. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> That's not okay um, High dragon can come in here So can blastoise. I mean either way really it's it's really annoying because that blissey is just staring me in the face uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna go can we stall out a Chandelure with Snorlax? I think we might be able to. The only problem is that Conkeldur, so I don't want to set up just yet. I'm going to go into High Dragon and scare this thing out. And his Blissey should come in, so I'm going to double into Double Aid. That was terrible. <laughs> that was a terrible pun. Uh, in comes Blissey, guaranteed. Or almost guaranteed. Conkeldur might also come in, but I don't see that thing wanting to take a Draco Meteor, so... It's more than likely Blissey. Let's switch out. Uh, we already know he's Specs. The blade is in. And I may just start setting up. I'm not sure yet. I think that might be the play. Uh, let's go for... You know what? Let's let's test the waters first. I'm going to go for an Iron Head. As he does go into Honchkrow, that's awesome. We're going to get off a ton of damage on that. That's really cool. And now I can just go into Sylveon here. As he goes for a Pursuit, which does a lot of damage. He takes the Life Orb hit. Uh, probably should have just Shadow Sneak there or set up. That's fine, though. Uh, I'm going to go for the Wish on this turn as he goes for a Brave Bird. That's going to do a lot of damage, but it is going to knock him out with the Recoil, which is awesome. And now if he goes into Blissey, we can just go back into the Blade. Uh, I'm expecting Beedrill to come out as it does. We are going straight into the Blade. If he Drill Runs, then he Drill Runs. There's nothing I can do. He actually goes for a Sword Stance. Whoa. Okay. Hold up. <laughs> this is scary. Is this thing actually Drill Run? Because then I think it just wins. Uh... It might not knock me out, actually, because it's not adaptability, right? So let's go for Iron Head. He is Drill Run. It's going to do a lot of damage, but it's not going to be able to knock me out. We are going to clean take out the Beedrill with an Iron Head. We can wish this thing back up again. Uh, I'm expecting either the Chandelure or the Conkeldur to come in here. There is best plays. We were able to take out two Pokemon with this the Blade. It's, that's And, like, two Pokemon that normally can handle it pretty well. Uh, well, I wouldn't say Beedrill as much because it only really gets access to Drill Run. As you can see, that did pitiful damage at plus two. That's a powerful Pokemon, man. That's a that's a Beedrill. Uh, we can go into Snorlax here pretty freely. 
uh, as he goes for the fire blast that's gonna do absolutely no damage that's specs by the way and uh, I can just return here because he's not staying in he's going straight into Conkeldor he's gonna take a very big return right here it's gonna do 35% he is guts oh wait a minute okay you know what I'm expecting knockoff so I'm actually just gonna go for another return as he goes for a bulk up okay that's fine too because he's taking burn damage repeatedly so uh, now I kind of have to go into the blade because if he drain punches all this health back that's very bad he goes for another bulk up though all right that's fine uh, I'm assuming he's just gonna go for knockoff here so that's kind of why I want to go into high dragon uh, and we will be able to take the knockoff not very well but we still take it and should he go for mock punch here he dies so that's perfectly fine with me I'm just gonna go for a dark pulse here he does go for the mock punch didn't really need high dragon as long as that blissey is around it's an issue uh, we can just go into I believe I think Blastoise is my best play um, not so much because of the Chandelure but more because of the cloister I didn't want it getting a free uh, setup so I'm gonna go uh, Snorlax on this thing once again we can't really do anything to me he goes for the energy ball that does absolutely nothing uh, we're just gonna start cursing here because eventually this Chandelure will struggle uh, he goes into Cloister, that's absolutely fine. We'll go for the return uh, as he doubles back into Chandelure. I don't know what this thing is actually going to do to me. He might trick here. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to go into Blastoise, predicting the trick. As he does try to trick. Awesome, okay. So that worked out. Uh, now we're going to go into Sylveon, because he's locked into trick. He's going to go into Blissey. Cool. Uh, we're going to go for the Wish. And he's gonna go for the toxic and miss unfortunately and now we are going to get a free switch back into our deblade So this is uh, this is pretty good. Chandelure does come back out. That's absolutely fine I'm going into Blastoise hard. I do not want my Snorlax tricked as he goes for a fire blast That is gonna do a very very good amount of damage uh, but now Now that the blade is uh, Is healthy. I think I could pretty much just win this game by setting up with the blade on the Blissey so I'm going to uh, switch on into Snorlax here if he wants to double that's fine. He's just gonna go for the fire blast That's okay, and uh, as we saw before we can just return right here uh, This cloister comes in. That's absolutely fine We'll get off some decent damage on it, and we will return again as he goes back into Chandelure I'm going to return again because like I said before if I get it set up with the blade on the blissey I pretty much win so I don't know if he would trick here. I think he's just gonna attack honestly so we're just gonna go for uh, for a return. It's kind of a stally end game here. He does go for trick. All right. So that was a good play on his part. Uh, we are now choice specs into return. Uh, so that's that's unfortunate. Um, I'm trying to think if Sylveon can live a hit. All right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go Blastoise on his uh, energy ball, which is fine. Then we're gonna go into Sylveon, and we are going to protect on his fire blast and we're gonna get a little bit of health back and we can stall out his fire blast potentially like if he goes for another one right here he's down to two so we'll go Snorlax here uh, obviously Snorlax can't do anything to this uh, he actually misses that fire blast so that would have been an excellent turn to wish up but uh, that's okay uh, he pretty much has to attack us here he can go for repeated fire blasts it's not really gonna do anything I'm just gonna click return goes for the energy ball that's fine uh, as we are gonna return on that turn. Uh, I'm assuming he's gonna fire blast now. Nope He's just gonna keep going for energy ball. I'm gonna go into the blade on this turn because I expect him to energy ball again uh, Yep, he does awesome that does uh, pitiful damage and I'm curious to know if the blade can knock this out uh, Chandelure choice specs. Can you knock it out from full the blade? No, 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 you can't all right. Uh, we're going back into Snorlax on what I'm assuming is going to be a Shadow Ball. Yep, that sh new Shadow Ball animation is so cool, dude. Uh, I'm gonna go for the rest right here as he goes for a an energy ball. Uh, we will lock ourselves into rest and we will PP stall you. Trust me. Uh, Cloyster comes out. No, we won't. All right. Um, we're going straight into the blade. I cannot risk this thing setting up in front of me. It does go for the shell smash. That's absolutely fine. We're gonna go for the secret sword right here. Uh, Ice Cool Spear is gonna do a little bit of damage. Hopefully, he's not King's Rock. That actually does absolutely nothing for a Shell Smashed Cloister. Uh, as we are going to get off the Secret Sword right here and be able to take out his Cloister with a combination of that plus Shadow Sneak. So goodbye to that. And uh, like I said before, uh, Snorlax can pretty much PP stall the Chandelure. I'm not worried about it at all. We can just go into it right here. As uh, he does go for the Shadow Ball, that's fine. 
Uh, we can go for the uh, rest repeatedly. Again, like this is this is just purely PP stuff. Okay, you got a special defense drop. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna rest again. Uh, if he goes for fire blast, that's absolutely fine. He's wasting his fire blasts. We will wake up and go for rest. And now I'm gonna go into Sylveon. Uh, actually, yeah, Sylveon's fine. This is a very stally game, guys. I'm very sorry. Uh, if he tricks right here, that would be really cool. Uh, he actually goes into Blissey. Okay, this is good. This is good. This is good. We get to get off a Wish. Uh, if he gets off a Toxic, that's fine. He does switch back into Chandelure. We're gonna go for Wish. And I'm gonna go for Protect right here. Because at this point, he has to try to Shadow Ball me. Uh, which means now we're back up to full. I can go for a Hyper Voice uh, as he switches out into Blissey. And every time Blissey comes in, I can just go for Wish. And he can go for Seismic Toss all he wants, but if I pass this into the blade, he's screwed. So, he's got to be careful with how he goes about this. He goes for Toxic, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go for the Heal Bell on this turn, as we do cure off the Toxic. And we wake up our Snorlax, which doesn't really do anything because it's still Trick Choice Specs. I'm going to go for Wish. Uh, let's see if he lands the Toxic. He does. And we will pass this into our De Blade this time. Uh, I'm not going to go for the Heal Bell. If he switches out into Chandelure, good on him. But he does not, and that means that we are at full health, and Chandelure should go down to a plus two Shadow Sneak, so we will Swords Dance here, and this should be the end of the game. So, let's go for Shadow Sneak. Dead Chandelure, goodbye, and uh, that pretty much seals it up as he forfeits. Perfect. So, damn gone is damn gone. Uh, we are at 21 minutes, and uh, we will find one more, hopefully as quickly as we did the last one, because I don't feel like pausing again. It's really annoying. Uh, I don't like watching content that's paused and replayed and like cut. It kind of uh, it gets to me a little bit. Uh, I like just straight the whole way through because, like, you guys want to see like real content. You want to like make sure that I'm like winning every game and that I'm not giving you like false uh, impressions that I'm just winning everything and that I'm actually losing like 80% of my games. You know what I mean? So I, I don't like that. Anyway. Uh, my opponent has a team that is extremely weak to Snorlax outside of the Heracross. So, uh, yeah, we can pretty much just win with that, <laughs> honestly. Gotta watch out for Trick Rotom. Um, another Tricker. I will go uh, and lead with, I think... I think Nidoqueen might be my better lead uh, against his team. Yeah, looking like Nidoqueen is the best possible lead. As he does lead with Suicune, so this is cool. I'm curious to know how much this actually does. I don't think it does that much. Suicune. Well, this thing should be about as bulky as Blastoise, right? Let's find out. Nido Queen, Offensive Entry Hazard Setter with Max Attack, Sheer Force, Life Orb, uh, Replace Ice Beam by Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Okay, it's a two-hit KO. Wow. All right, let's go for it. Boom. 56%. <laughs> As he goes for a Scald, he does not get the burn, and he has to be scared right now. So I'm just going to go for Stealth Rocks. Uh, he can't stay in. Yep. Nope. He goes into Rotom. Awesome. All right, so we're able to catch that. He's definitely going for the Overheat right here. Uh, I'm just going to switch out into my Blastoise, because that checks this pretty well. does go for the Overheat. Let's find out if he's choiced or not right now, uh, as we will just go for a Dark Pulse, uh, as he does go for the Volt Switch. All right, that's fine. Hopefully we catch the Suicune. That's what I'm aiming for. Uh, Roserade wouldn't be too bad because we just went for basically a Stab Dark Pulse. This might be able to take out Suicune, actually. This is Stab. Nope, it's not enough. And he can get off a Rest right here if he's faster, which actually Suicune is not. Great set, Jose. Great set. We're able to take out Suicune. Nice. I love this. Is this even speed invested at all? It is, right? We saw that at the beginning of the episode. Yeah, 116. I would not have been able to outspeed the Suicune right there without that investment. That is so smart. That's brilliant. Uh, so Heracross comes in. Heracross, I think, always runs knockoff in this tier, uh, specifically for the Blade because it can't touch it otherwise. So we'll just switch out into Sylveon. Uh, as he does go for the knockoff, uh, I want to calc to see that damage because Sylveon, that might be banded actually. Uh, Sylveon, let's say Cap Call Mind, it doesn't really matter, uh, versus. Uh, what are you? What are you? You're a Heracross. That's right. Uh, UU Choice Band. Knockoff. Yeah, that's definitely banded. That is definitely banded, my friends. Um, I'm assuming the Roserade is going to come in here. So what I actually want to do 
is go for the double into Hydreigon. Uh, as the Rotom actually chooses to come out, so that's actually not bad at all. Uh, we do see leftovers, so we know he's not defense. Uh, he's not offensive. Uh, we can pretty much just drop a Draco on this thing. Uh, it does run a little bit of spit F, but I don't think it's enough to take this. Let's see. We are Life Orb. This is going to be enough to take out the Rotom, so that's yet another threat gone. That's nice. Uh, Heracross comes back in, probably just a close combat. This time I'm going to Blade. We already know you're uh, you're banded. It does go for the Mega Horn. <laughs> that did 12. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, we are going to double into. I believe Blastoise is my best play, as he does go Dawn Fen. That's cool. Uh, we're just going to go for a uh, Scald here on this turn. As he does stay in, we knock him down to Sturdy, uh, and he goes for the Rapid Spin to get rid of our rocks. We still have our Rock Setter, though, so he has to keep that in mind. Uh, I'm not going to go into it here. I'm just going to fire off a Dark Pulse. It is going to be able to knock out this Dawn Fan. Roserade comes in freely now, however. So this is a little bit of an issue. At the same time, I do have a Snorlax that can pretty much take this thing on. Uh, he goes for a Sleep Powder and misses. Uh, I could have been able to Sleep Talk that after as well, so that's fine. He might just go for it again. Uh, I'm just going to go for a Return, as he does Sleep Powder. And now I'm going to go for a Sleep Talk, uh, as this thing cannot touch me. So he does switch out into Heracross. Uh, we are going to get the Sleep Talk Return. Knock this thing down to 21. And now I'm going into Sylveon because once again this thing could not touch me. He does go for the knockoff again. Uh, and now I'm going to wish up uh, as his Roserade does come in. That's fine. We can go into Hydreigon here as we do outspeed this. Uh, he's going to go for a layer of spikes. That's absolutely fine. And we are going to go for, now that we have a uh, Sleep Fodder Pokemon, I can pretty much just Dark Pulse here. His Heracross should go down to this. It's Life Orb Dark Pulse. Uh, he's going to switch into his Aerodactyl, actually. That's a good play. Uh, we are going to get off a lot of damage on this thing. Knock it down to 27%. And now I can just Dark Pulse again as he does Mega Evolve. Goes for the Stone Edge. It is not able to knock us out. Dark Pulse is going to pick up the KO on the Aerodactyl. I might want to keep this High Dragon alive, specifically for the Roserade. Uh, it's not bad at all because we do have Sleep Fodder and Snorlax. Uh, this should pretty much just be the game at this point, honestly. Uh, because his Roserade should have HP Fire, in theory. So, uh, and we already know his, um, his Heracross is banded. So, we can, uh, we can just roost up here. We are faster than Roserade. Uh, we take the HP fire very well. I guess he expected me to switch out into the blade. I'm just gonna go for another roost here. He can't sleep powder us. He has spikes and hidden power fire. So, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up. Opponent decides to forfeit. Uh, we are at 1564. Not too high, not too low. That's not too bad on the UU ladder, honestly. And, uh, I like his, uh, his username, his gamertag. Uh, Twilight Roserade, really cool. And he's using a Roserade. Who would have known? But yeah, that's gonna wrap it up for this one, guys. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my Facebook and my Twitter pages. They are in the description down below. And uh, leave a comment for me. Let me know what you thought of this live. If you like back-to-back -back same tier lives as well, that'd be really cool to know. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. I'll catch you later. Ciao.